See, Jesus is different in you to what he is in me. Jesus is going to be different in you to what he is in me. Jesus loves you personally. He's going to become something in you that he isn't in me. You are unique, you know. You're a, a picture frame inside which God wants to draw a unique picture of his son. So his son Jesus is going to come into existence in you in a way that is different from the way he comes into existence in me. The religious forces move in upon you to prevent that and make you a miserable stereotype who dot all the I's, cross all the T's, utter all the shibboleths, repeat all the religious jargon, fall into all the religious patterns. And the religious forces move in to make you satisfied with that or refuse it, refuse it. Have something fresh inside you as Mary had. Find Jesus fresh among you. Find Jesus fresh inside you. Get to know Jesus personally yourself. Allow him to become what he wants in you, even if you end up doing things differently from other people, even if you end up doing things that other people don't agree with. Let Jesus, let the word become flesh in you. The secular powers will move against you. Know that. The financial world will move against you for anything that Jesus tries to do in trusting God for your finances. The professional world will move against you because it will move against you for daring to oppose selfish ambition in your life. As the Word becomes flesh among you, as Jesus begins to try as a little... You know it. Do you see it, a little baby? <laughs> Do you see what a little baby is? You know, they're little fingers, and they're just so helpless. I mean, you know, actually, they must be the frailest thing. You remember Pascal said, man is but a frail reed, you know, a thinking reed, but a frail reed. And you look at a little baby, a little baby human being seems even more vulnerable than a little baby animal, doesn't he, somehow? It takes immense care from the mother to keep the little one alive. That's Jesus in you. That's the Savior in you. The Savior in you is just a little tiny baby. And it'll take all your care and nourishment and nurture to have him grow. And what the forces of religion and the forces of secular powers try to do is snatch him out from you and put some coarse, crude imitation in the place of Jesus. Don't do it. The Savior is wriggling and wriggling inside you and wants to get out and wants to begin to express himself in your words and your actions. Cherish him and treasure him and see that the forces of evil try to move to destroy that. The secular powers will do it. The religious powers will do it. The powers of the spiritual world will do it. They will. There are mighty spiritual powers. Loved ones, I don't know if you know of a particular amazing verse in Daniel. Daniel, it's chapter 10, and it's page 772. 772. And it's Daniel 10, and verses 10 through 14. Just an incredible uh, piece of the Bible. Uh, Daniel is page 772, and Daniel 10, and verse 10 at the bottom left-hand column there. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, give heed to the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your mind to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. So I left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia and came to make you understand what is to befall your people in the latter days, 
for the vision is for days yet to come. Now, loved ones, the person that was talking to Daniel was not a man. He was an angel of God. And when he says in verse 13, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, he's talking about Satan's prince. That's why he says, but Michael, one of the chief priests, we all know Michael is an archangel. And what the angel of God is saying is, there is actually a battle in the spiritual places where there are actually spirits of Satan that try to prevent the angels of God coming to you to assist you. There are mighty powers that converge to prevent Jesus being born in you. Loved ones, it's always easier to sell to masses of us human beings something crude and coarse. It's always difficult to transmit something as frail and gentle as the baby Jesus. And that is what the forces of evil try to destroy. Now you may say, well, how on earth, how on earth can I conceive Jesus inside me? How on earth have I any chance of the Savior becoming real in me and His Word becoming flesh in me? Well, because, loved ones, you have the same assistance as Mary had. And that assistance is there if you want to look at it in 1 John 4 and verse 4. 1 John 4 and verse 4. It's page 1067. 1 John 4 and verse 4. Page 1067. Little children, verse 4, you are of God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He who is in you is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you and he is greater than all the powers of the world. He is greater than the crude, coarse powers that move upon you in your business or your profession. He is greater even than the crude, coarse powers of the religious world that move upon you. The Holy Spirit is in you, and he is greater than all the powers of hell and all the powers of Satan. And he is inside you. And it is him that will conceive Jesus in you. It is him that will bring to life the Savior. It is the Savior that the world desperately wants to see. The world is fed up to the teeth with religious people. It's fed up to the teeth with people who talk religion. But it desperately wants to see the fresh and gentle Jesus. It wants to see the pure Jesus, the Jesus who practices what he preaches. And the Holy Spirit is within you and is able to conceive Jesus in you. What have you to do? Just what Mary did. In Luke 1 and verse 38. Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit, as Mary did, and say to him, Be it to me according to your word. And the Holy Spirit may point out some things in your life that you never knew about or you never thought very much about. He may point out some things that he wants you to do that you never thought of. He may point out some other things and say they're wrong and you never thought they were wrong. Listen to him. Acknowledge him. Honor him. The Holy Spirit will by that means, by your response, he will begin to bring Jesus alive inside you. And the Word will begin to become flesh in you despite all the forces that converge to destroy that. 